Hello, this presentation is an internal instability case history that occurred at Broadhead Dam. The presentation was adapted from slides provided by Jim Talbot, retired from the USDA Soil Conservation Service. This presentation will cover an overview of the dam, a summary of the incident investigation, the findings of the investigation, and the repairs that were performed to address the damaged dam. First will be an overview of the dam. The U.S. Soil Conservation Service, now known as the NRCS, Dam PA-463 is Broadhead Dam, and also known as Levitt Branch Dam, is located in north central Pennsylvania in Mon Monroe County. The project is a dry dam and helps regulate the flow from Levitt Branch, one of the headwaters of Broadhead Creek, and it impounds approximately 1,544 acre feet of water. The earth embankment is 90 feet tall with three and three quarters to one upstream slope and a three and a half to one downstream slope. The dam was constructed from broadly graded glacial till consisting of non-plastic silty sand with gravel, cobbles, and boulders. The foundation rock is shale and silty shale. The maximum particle size was 6 inches for zone 1 and 15 inches for zone 3. Zone 2 consisted of cobbles and boulders. An internal drainage system consists of a drainage fill placed on the downstream slope of the cutoff trench excavation and a tow drain placed on in the downstream shell. The top right figure shows the dam profile. This was replotted to be on a one-to-one -one scale and is shown in the bottom figure. The left abutment was steep with a slope approximately equal to one-to-one. -to -one. This figure shows the location of a gravel blanket drain that was placed over the left downstream abutment rock. The drain started at about 20 feet downstream of the dam center line and extended 210 feet to a 12-inch drain pipe. The zone one embankment soil is broadly graded with 30% fines, 50% sand, and 20% gravel with approximately 15 to 20% cobbles and boulders. The drain was supposed to be designed using soil conservation service criteria in effect at the time from 1968. The soil conservation service design criteria required the filter to be designed using the gradation curve for base material finer than one inch. The investigation into the incident will be described in the following slides. A large flood event occurred and rapidly filled Broadhead Dam on 18 April 1984. On May 4, 1984, a large sinkhole was observed at Station 4 plus 13 on the downstream side of the embankment about 160 feet downstream of the center line. The sinkhole was about 6 feet in diameter and 4 feet deep. The sinkhole was investigated using a backhoe. The excavation revealed a large system of cavities. Some of the cavities were horizontal. Heavy equipment was brought in to enlarge the excavation to find the extent of the problem. Numerous cavities were found in the excavation. This hole was 28 feet deep and up to 6 feet in diameter. The cavities were carefully excavated and traced to study the source of the problem. Some of the cavities were up to 10 feet in diameter. Most of the cavities originated above the steep shale left abutment. As the excavation progressed, more and more large cavities were revealed. The yellow dots in the figure show the sinkhole locations. They appear to be associated with the blanket drain near the left abutment and the steep rock slope in the abutment. Here is a section view of the voids. It was estimated that approximately 250 cubic yards of material was missing. At most locations, the finer portion of the fill was missing with the coarse portion left in the bottom of the cavity. No visible signs of sediment or lost fill from the cavities was observed at the drain outlets. Once the numerous voids were discovered, a decision was made to quickly breach the dam prior to a new storm. Note the steep left abutment shown in the photo. 
The findings of the investigation will be described in the following slides. The fill was near optimum water content and well compacted. A ripper was required to be used to assist excavation for the quick breach. During the investigation, it was found that the embankment fill was internally unstable with fines and fine sands washing out of the embankment, leaving the coarse sand and gravel behind. The embankment soils fall within Sherrard's band of gradation envelopes of unstable, broadly graded soils. On the steep left abutment, the cutoff trench was excavated into solid rock. The shale was not treated or excavated to solid rock upstream of the cutoff. At the upstream slope contact with the abutment, the exposed shale rock is weathered with many joints. Water flowing from the steep jointed fracture bedrock in the left abutment was thought to have caused the internal erosion. The blanket drain was excavated. The photo shows the coarseness of the drain compared to the adjacent material. It was also found that the phase one inspection of the dam suggested a design deficiency in the filter drainage system with fines being observed exiting the ends of the drain pipes. For broadly graded materials prone to internal instability, the design of the filter should have been based on the mobile fraction of the base material rather than the total fraction. Had the filter design taken into account the internal stability of the base soil, the incident may have been avoided. The maximum D15 of the drain should have been less than 0.7 millimeters. The drain outlet collector pipe was a perforated corrugated metal pipe surrounded by coarse drain material. Finally, the lost fines were found below the bottom half of the pipe in the drain material. The drain outlet pipe was half full of fines from the fill. It was concluded that the voids in the open gravel and cobble zones were created in the embankment from the washing of the fines and fine sand from the soil mass. The fines and fine sand were deposited in the drainage fill materials and some of the fines may have been washed through the drains and discharged into the downstream channel. The cavities were enlarged upward by caving of the ceiling or stoping. This slide provides a summary of the erosion mechanism. Water entered into the fractured upstream and developed full reservoir head on the upstream side of the cutoff trench. The steep left abutment rock caused the dam to crack due to differential settlement and or hydraulic fracture due to low confining stress. High gradient flow through the cracks eroded the non-plastic fine portion of the broadly graded embankment fill. The drain material was too coarse to act as a proper filter and erosion continued. Sufficient void cap capacity in the drainage layer held the eroded soil without having observable cloudy seepage downstream. Sinkholes were formed by progressively caving or stoping. To conclude, the repairs that were performed to address the damage abatement will be described in the following slides. The recommended repairs included the following. Flatten and treat the rock abutment with dental grout. Remove the drainage blanket fill. Grout the core trench drain. Rebuild the embankment using the revised zoning and fill placement requirements. Install a properly designed chimney drain across the entire valley. Here's a photo of the breach area just prior to the repair. Weathered rock was removed from the steep left abutment and the slope was flattened. Grouting was performed from the surface of the dam to fill the coarse filter on the downstream side of the cutoff trench. The breach was backfilled and properly compacted. The downstream section of the dam was cut back to a 1.5 horizontal to one vertical slope and a new embankment filter drain was installed for the full length of the dam. The result of Soil Conservation Service studies on filters and the experiences using broadly graded soil caused the criteria for the design of filters to be modified as recommended in Sherrard and Donegan, 1985. To summarize the design issues, this dam had broadly graded internally unstable embankment soils with non-plastic fines. The fractured rock foundation was not properly treated. The steep left abutment was not properly excavated and graded. There was no full height chimney filter and the drains were not properly designed and were too coarse to prevent erosion. Next, we will provide some references for further information. These references can be used to
find more information about this project and for some information on designing filters for broadly graded soils.